Welcome to Ra Online. Today's topic is uh, dengue in pregnancy. So, 40% of the world's population live in the dengue prone zone and WHO estimates that at least 100 million infections occur every year including 5 lakh dengue hemorrhagic fever cases and nearly 22,000 deaths. So, dengue fever is a viral disease. It is caused by any of the four closely related serotypes of flavivirus which is an RNA virus. Aedes mosquito, particularly the Aedes aegypti is a vector transmitting it to human. Most of the states in India are dengue endemic and early detection and access to proper medical care will reduce the fatality from 20% to below 1%. So, we see that it is basically a disease of the southern hemisphere and the endemic regions are mostly the Latin America, the parts of Africa and India and the Southeast Asia. Dengue is caused by a family Flaviviridae which is group 4 SSRNA. And dengue is transmitted to humans by a mosquito Aedes aegypti and dengue infection in pregnancy carries the risk of hemorrhage for both the mother and the newborn and there is a serious risk of premature birth and fetal death. In case of infection which happens close to the term or near the delivery time there is a risk of vertical transmission from mother to baby causing newborn dengue. So, dengue infection with one serotype confers future protective immunity against that particular serotype but not against other serotypes. And after the bite of an infected mosquito, the dengue virus enters the body and replicates within the cells of the mononuclear phagocytes lineage like macrophages, monocytes and B cells. And additionally, this dengue virus also infects mast cells, dendritic cells and cells. The incubation period of dengue fever is 7 to 10 days. Whenever the patient is fever, having fever, that means she is having a viremic phase. So, a viremic phase follows where the patient becomes febrile and the patient is infective at the time she has fever and she has viremia. So, thereafter the patient may either recover or the patient may progress to a phase of plasma leakage leading to dengue hemorrhagic fever or even dengue shock syndrome. Now, peak plasma viremia correlates with the severity of dengue infections and some people respond differently to dengue infections. So, the differences in individuals is because of differences in antibody, differences in the cytokine activation and differences in the T cell responses as seen among patients with uncomplicated dengue or dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shocks. So, well-managed frontline response saves the lives of dengue patients. Obstetrician is a frontline physician for pregnant women and obstetrician should shoulder the responsibility of identifying and managing dengue fever in pregnancy. Dengue fever is a notifiable disease and every dengue patient should be notified to the medical officer of health of that region. So, this is the mosquito transmission which enters through the skin and the dengue virus enters into the bloodstream and it undergoes replication after releasing the decapsidation and single-stranded RNA release inside the platelet and once the mature viral particles are synthesized, the viruses are released in the blood. Now, in the phases of viremia, the person is infected and the bite of the mosquito leads to a uh, period of extrinsic incubation when the virus infects the midgut and eventually travels to the salivary gland, it takes around 8 to 10 days. This is the extrinsic incubation which happens in the midgut of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So, after getting matured in the midgut of the Aedes aegypti mosquito, they come to the salivary glands of the mosquito and when this mosquito bites a person, the person gets a human infection. And one mosquito can infect several humans at the same time. In the man, the incubation period is 4 to 7 days. And after 4 to 7 days, the mosquito takes a blood meal from a person with an acute dengue and the cycle repeats. So, the mosquito has got an extrinsic incubation period of 8 to 10 days and an intrinsic incubation period of 4 to 7 days. So, this dengue virus is an RNA virus and we have, there is a, a single standard genomic RNA and the capsid proteins and these are the M proteins and the E dimers on the surface. Now, this vector of dengue fever, Aedes aegypti, 
and this is endemic in Southeast Asia and once this releases the dengue virus in the bloodstream, this leads to activation of mast cell and infection of the dendritic cells and it enters via the mannose receptor in the infected macrophages and there is an activation of the T cell immunity and this leads to the trafficking of these uh, cytokine mediators towards the lymph node and then there is uh, cellular recruitment and endothelial damage and leaky capillaries. So this is a uh, Aedes aegypti mosquito and this mosquito is uh, infecting the human blood and this is the salivary glands of the Aedes aegypti mosquito with the proboscis. Now dengue in pregnancy has a mortality of 20% and it can be reduced to 1%. So basic mortality is because of the plasma leak from the intravascular to the extravascular compartment. So since there is a shrinkage of the intravascular compartment there will be a shock and visually progress as an uncompensated shock and then it will be called as a dengue shock syndrome. So shrinkage of intravascular compartment due to leak is called as the dengue shock syndrome. Other, other cause of death is dengue hemorrhagic fever which is called as DHF. Now uh, if we do not do the viral cultures or NS1 antigen or IgG or IgM dengue antibody, dengue fever is very difficult to distinguish from HELP syndrome. Uh, that is hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelet count in pregnancy. It's very difficult to differentiate from malaria in pregnancy. It can also mimic chikungunya in pregnancy and Ebola virus infection in pregnancy. During pregnancy, 80% of people who get dengue will be asymptomatic. 20 people with dengue viral infection will be symptomatic, 20% of them and some of them will develop fever. A few of them will develop dengue hemorrhagic fever and a few of them will develop the dengue shock syndrome and this can progress from a compensated shock to an uncompensated shock which is also called hypotensive shock and the uh, hallmark for the uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever is plasma leakage. So this is how the disease progresses. So there is an initial febrile phase which lasts for three to four days then there is a critical phase which lasts for four to six days and then there is a recovery phase of reabsorption which lasts from six days to around 12 days. So in the uh, febrile phase the patient gets fever in the critical phase the patient can develop hypothermia and recovery phase is a febrile phase. During in the febrile phase the major uh, problem is that of dehydration. In the critical phase the patient can go for shock features or bleeding fever. When bleeding develops it is called as hemorrhagic fever and when shock develops it is called as a dengue shock syndrome. 